I think always when you're going into any game, really, a final, it doesn't make that much difference. It's just making sure have we got all the preparation bits right, um, just delivering the plan, and that's all the way it always works. So essentially, you want the players to be able to drive a lot of the messaging at this stage because ultimately they're the ones that are delivering on the field now, so they're very clear in their plan. From a squad point of view and a regional point of view, it would mean everything. Just really show where we've come on and developed over the last sort of three or four years together as a squad, and um, you know to become I think the first Welsh side to go back to back would uh, would be a huge achievement for us. And you know to come back uh, um, a year on and to and to redo it, um, you know, it'd be a huge achievement. But we know how, how tough it's going to be as well. I know come next week or next month, that's probably when I'll look back on my time. But right now, it's a it's not about me, it's about the, the 55 guys that have run out in the Pro 14 this year, this season alone for Leinster, and uh, you know, and just chasing a performance, so that's what we've been driving all week. You know, there's plenty of leaders across the Leinster Chamber room, Rob Carney, Devon Toner, Johnny Sexton, you know, there's a lot of calm voices that know how to uh, perform on big days and know how to shape the week, so there's, there's a lot of experience there. It is a quality Leinster side, obviously the European champions, and I guess that's the way it should be really, to, to, to win back-to-back -back titles and go into that sort of elite territory. Then you've got to beat the best sides to do that, and uh, Leinster at the moment are the benchmark after their magnificent success in, in the European Champions Cup. And So to play them here, uh, you know, uh, only a matter of a month or so after playing them in the European Champions Cup, it's, it's just a great opportunity. So look, hopefully we can do that, and uh, we'll certainly be giving out everything we've got. Yeah, Scarlet's, um, yeah, the team that we know incredibly well because this is our, what, fifth time preparing for them now so, as a group. So, yeah, they're, they're a very well-coached team. Defensively, they're very, very strong and they're very aggressive around the rook. Um, and if they turn the ball over and they're successful in what they're trying to do defensively, then they're very strong with their counter-attack game because they play with a lot of wit. So, um, yeah, for us it's about how we manage the ball so we don't give them some of those opportunities. And um, We didn't do it particularly well in our semi-final game last year and... You know, we learned some pretty painful lessons that day. Um, you know, for us, it's about trying to learn from the past and try and get better. So um, we had a good day out here in the semi-final, you know, of, the, of Europe this year five weeks ago. But you know, we can't take anything for granted against them because you know we saw in their semi-final against Glasgow away. You know, when you you, you know you, you don't respect the ball against them, they're very very dangerous and they can cause teams to have a lot of problems. So we're just constantly just uh, kind of gear, you know, for match time. Uh, from the stadium point of view, it's a big operation there. We're probably about 13, 14 on the staff here, and uh, everybody plays an important part in it. We have to ensure we have 1,200 staff in sight, and that's made up of roughly about 900 uh, kind of bartenders, waiters, about 100 chefs, about 100 managers, and roughly about 100 cleaners because we look after cleaning operation here at the stadium as well. So typically on a match day, we sell roughly about one and a half pints per person, so that's just over 70,000 pints. Uh, food is broken into a number of different categories. So for our corporate hospitality, we do about 3,000 full corporate hospitality covers, and that's full meals of sit-down or bowl food. Um, and then in our retail areas, uh, we will do roughly about 6,500 burgers, about 5,000 hot dogs, about 5,000 portions of chips, and then we have meal deals as well, which we do about 2,500 of those. You need to be tense, you need to be focused, you need to be wound up. It's like, it, it's, it's, look, I'm not playing a game. Like the, the most important thing today is the bloody match and the, the 15 against 15 or the two squads of 23 and the, the officials. That's, that's what today is all about. And we're just the, the, on the fringes of adding a bit of atmosphere and creating a bit of uh, tension for the, for the audience and the build-up of the game. And um, 
but it is all about the, the the players. I suppose I feel like a player sometimes. Yeah, I'm kind of wound up. I'm uptight. I hope everything's going. I'm double checking, travel checking everybody. I'm just making sure that everybody that's here knows exactly what they to do. I repeat myself over and over and over again and again and again because I just want to make sure everybody's in check. Yeah, how's this? Um, it's, it's the key to this is, is basically communication and uh, just making sure that everybody knows what their role is on, on match day. Um, and then after every game, we, we, uh, we carry out a debrief as well. And uh, we, don't, we learn from game to game. So that's a, that's a constantly evolving um, situation. So it's a special day for me. Um, I think the key is just controlling the emotion. Uh, as players are nervous and guard because it's a special day for them, so it's a special day for us. But this is, this is what we ref for, as what players play for. And it's a special moment in, in certainly my career, and I can't wait for it. Well, what, we, what we have is the, the screen that everybody sees at home, um, and then we have a seven second delay screen. Um, so, literally, we can check something in real time, but we see like everybody else at home, and then we have an opportunity to get a second look at it seven seconds after the event. Um, and a large percentage of the decisions that you look at, you do, and then you just don't have to work, go, you know, don't go ahead with, because by second viewing, you're happy that the tackle wasn't high, or, or even that it was high. You know, um, I would much rather still be a referee than a TMO. Um, and having done a number of these games, um, I still enjoy refereeing more than I enjoy TMOing. Um, I get much more satisfaction being on the pitch and running round. Um, Look, you're the referee and you've got the whistle and you, and you make thousands of decisions in a game. Um, you can make some mistakes. As a TMO, you might get one decision and you're judged on one decision. Leo, to what extent could you and Leinster dust off the game plan from a month or so ago and to what extent have you gone back to the drawing board and tweaked things a bit? I think is the most important thing for us to remember is uh, where we came unstuck against Scarlets in the semi-finals last year. Um, because it was watching their semi-final against Glasgow away, it brought back a lot of uh, very unhappy memories. So um, for us, yeah, we, we know the things that you know, I suppose that we really learned from that day last season, um, and a lot of things that we've talked about this week. So just whether you can go about implementing it again. So um, yeah, it's a great challenge. Um, two teams that like to play a pretty attractive style. So we hope it's a good game. It's once more and kind of no more, I guess, for this season at least. The minds, I'm sure, are very, very willing. Are you convinced the bodies are exactly where you need them to be at this end of the season after an awful lot of emotional outlay? Yeah, and that's the challenge. Yeah, like it's amazing, um, but that's a great opportunity that these guys have to do something very, very special as a group. So, um, yeah, I hope they just go out and give themselves a good performance today. And um, you know, we've had amazing following all year, so hopefully the crowd will respond to what the players deliver on the field. Yeah, this is this is going to be a completely different challenge to um, the semi-final and Champions Cup. You know, they are. I think they're going to come to play, they're going to come to uh, attack the way that they know they can and, and that's probably uh, a more intimidating beast than it was a, a few weeks ago. So we've got to be on our, on our toes and you know, just really chasing performance. double, something they have never done before. The champions of this competition looking to hold on to their trophy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely it's definitely been uh, a different mind game following uh, the Champions Cup, and it's you know we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to to chase a performance because we've let this slip. There's a few of us that have let this slip uh, a couple of times already, and it makes for a very dark summer in my eyes. Um, sort of almost or what if? You know, it just takes you all the way into into summer and beyond.
punches. He wanted me to have a look, but we do that by just slowing it down, and then you can check it by reviewing the different angles without actually having to go time off. But uh, it's not too good for Aaron Shingler and the call it off the pitch by his teammates and also this big crowd. It's, a, it's always a good sign, though, in a way, if you, if you walk off the pitch. You know, if, if you've done terrible damage, then you're going to be stretched off. So hopefully, you know, the Scarlet's medical team can get to work on him quickly and then the Welsh team, and we can see him playing some part in the tour. He's had another tremendous year. Leave it to the doctors, you do not speculate. Absolutely. Well, he's not moving at the moment, but Bravo Sexton up to the goal! The man who's denied a chance to appear in the Champions Cup final has his Cup final try, James Lowe. Has got one in the second, but okay. I'll need the corner flag. Okay, check in. Try or no try. Stand by. So I just need a freeze frame of the corner flag. This one will be perfect. Oh, spot on. Okay, Stu, I've got a decision for you. One more angle, one more angle. You may award the try. It's a monopolised possession at the end, much to their credit. But Nichols still fighting. On to Williams. Scott Williams at the touchline. He's managed to stay in. Look at this for defiance. Trying to find a way now to the try line. Carberry offload. But Nichols, he's got a third. He has got a third. Well done to Leinster. It's the double, the season they dreamt of. And more importantly, the season they believe could happen. Issa Nathewa injured going into the final, couldn't make too much of the game itself, but he hobbles out there now to join in the well-deserved celebration. Leinster, the best team in Europe. And they further proved that point in their domestic competition by winning today as well. They're getting used to lifting cups again, and it feels so good for them. To us who watch, it really does feel like Leinster are a team at the start of something very special again here. A new era to savour. 
looks around the corner. The double. Isa, Isa, Isa. This is a Leinster season that will be unforgettable, a magnificent effort. Scarlets, they were strong, they did as much as they could, but Leinster were a class apart. Probably, um, you know, they are the champions of Europe for a reason, and um, they are the best team that we've uh, faced you know, over the last couple of years. You know, they're very well drilled and uh, they're very clinical for us, and they are deservedly the winners. How bitter is this today to swallow that defeat? Ah, uh, mate, it sucks losing a final. I don't know if you've been in one yourself, but it's, um, mate, it's, it's like you lost someone. You just, you, you, you're just very upset and you, it's tough talking about it, mate. You'll never change what happened, you know, and uh, the pain of of being the head coach in a, in a home World Cup and not qualifying you know, will stay with me forever, but there's no doubt about it that the, um, the decision to come to Leinster has been the best decision I ever could have made, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, fantastic group of players, great staff to work with, um, and to achieve success you know, helps, helps massively. You know, physically and emotionally, and uh, you know, it does weigh, like, you know, I was thinking about this before the game, you know, we've, we've left four finals behind us. Uh, we've, some of us have never lost a European final. We've won five out of five European finals, but we've only had two league victories and we've left four behind us. Um, so that, that weighed on me anyway, um, you know, heavily today. And we've learned a lot. I think I remember some of the lads, of course, away that we, one year we, we were playing the Ospreys and Gervin Dempsey and Malcolm Kelly were retiring and, you know, Michael Cheka made it all about them, rightly so. They gave so much to the club. And but I remember just feeling, you know, overwhelmed by you know trying to send those guys off for the victory, and we forgot that we had to go and play a game of rugby and play well. And today we we spoke about that that you know wanting Issa to finish on a high wasn't going to be enough. We had to go out and play really well and execute the game plan, and I thought we did that pretty well. I think anything you know in the game, it's it's. When you achieve something together as a group, that's what it's all about. It's you know trying to share those memories together, um, and it's just a sense this sort of you get a sense of satisfaction from achieving together, and that's what the game is like for me always. You know whether that was doing something under 12s to to now, it's the same feeling. You know, so um, you work hard over the course of the season, you share all the ups and downs together, um, but if you get to or the players get to lift the trophy at the end it's just that sense of achievement as a group which is you know, that's what will you'll always remember